Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam I. B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. Uh, you might know me from Wits News, Conservative Daily Post, uh, Teddy Stick. Um, if you know me from Blasting News, I do hope that you take the time to hit the driving and crying interview that went up. I am very happy with that, and I think that it's being shared far and wide. Other than the Judas Priest article, I, I want to say nothing has hit quite as rapidly as, as this has. So hopefully everyone can hear me. If not, that is what that backup camera is for, because things can get glitchy. All right, friends, uh, moving into why you came, the massive Fukushima update. I do want to thank everyone as we begin it for taking the time to support the show over the years. Yes, uh, the Hall of Fame weekend was the anniversary of when the show launched. The show used to be two people. Well, and I'm only doing two shows a month, month now. I used to do two or three shows a week. And there was like a banter that existed between me and the other person who had hosted this with me. I sort of am doing the massive Fukushima update and the dunce cap of the month now, so it didn't really seem like it needed necessarily its own trumpet and parade, if you will. But yeah, the show has been on for a moment. So let's go on to uh, what, it, what we're starting with. A new Finnish study finds no evidence for man-made climate change. Now, this one, uh, out of all the shows I do, the Fukushima shows tend to be the videos that get shared the most. And this is definitely going to be a hot-button issue among those who do. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Brian. Um, because one of the main... Hello, Molise. Hello! Yes, it's something that, sh that uh, the, the Molise have joined us. They would definitely know about the Fukushima disaster. One of the one of the major things you hear about as a justification for a nuclear technology, one of the reasons given why you're supposed to be handing over you are thousands of millions of dollars in taxes to the nuke industry is because man is warming the planet. And nuclear is the answer. Now, we've already covered why that's not the case. So we're not going to do that again. But let's just pretend that it could have been the case. This was just published. Paul Joseph Watson. A new study by researchers at Tukur University in Finland found that the human contribution to a rise of 0.1 degrees Celsius in global temperatures over the last century is just 0.01 degrees Celsius. The paper, and you can download the PDF, it is in the description of this video, titled, No Experimental Evidence for the Significant Anthropogenic Climate Change, that means man-made man climate change, was published by Jakuri Kaupinen, I'm sure I butchered that, and Pika Maumi. They found that during the last 100 years, the temperature is increased about 0.1 degrees Celsius because of carbon, di carbon dioxide. The human contribution was about 0.01 degrees Celsius. For those of you that don't know, that is almost indetectable, even on a global scale. That, that, needs, that can't be overstressed. Kalpinen and Maumi concluded that global temperatures are controlled primarily by cloud cover, and that only a small part of the increased carbon dioxide concentration is anthropogenic, man-made. The study also calls into question the claims of the UN IPCC, which concluded that global temperatures are largely driven by human activity. Well, doesn't seem to be the case, does it? While the methods and results of the study can be debated, this again illustrates how there is no overwhelming consensus on man-made global warming as the media claims. Again, 
This was from the Turker University in Finland. So don't blame some evil American oil company. In reality, there are dozens of prominent scientists who believe that climate change is driven by natural forces or that the United Nations climate projections are unreliable. And considering that none of them have come true yet, that would seem to be the case. Um, beyond nuclear, next thing I want to get to, there's a lot of these this time. Oops. Manipulated childhood cancer data hides radiation impact, harms public health protection. Now, many of you longtime viewers know that I am a fan of the science, which is espoused by Dr. Helen Collicott when it comes to issues of radiation. Uh, sometimes when she talks about other things, well, then you know, we don't always agree. But I have great respect for her. And let me say this, she has been warning for years that the childhood, hello Regina, the childhood cancer rates have been drastically altered and changed from the reality that is being seen by people in the medical community. A lot of the people, particularly on my comment line, love to show up talking about you know, write long paragraphs about pure junk science that they're saying shows that Fukushima somehow isn't a danger. Let's take a look at this. And again, the in the description, you can download, you can get the link. It'll take you to the Beyond Nuclear site. And then all of the links proving the science behind what I'm saying is in the article. So just click and you'll see everything. This article relies heavily on postings at Fukushima Voice version 2E. Revelations and analysis below would be impossible without the painstaking translations and thoughtful discussions from the Fukushima Voice. That's what they provide. As the Fukushima nuclear catastrophe unfolded in March of 2011, experts began applying lessons, some poorly learned or incomplete, from other nuclear disasters, primarily Chernobyl. Chernobyl it took nearly, after Chernobyl, it took nearly a decade for official experts to admit what data were revealing. Now, how many times do you hear people quoting data that is not within that 10 year span? It took nearly a decade for official experts to admit what the data was revealing. Exposure to radio iodine one of the nucleotides released from nuclear power plants increases thyroid cancer, not just when they melt down. This is leached into the environment in many instances when they're running well. Those who were children at the time of their exposure were particularly vulnerable as radioactive clouds blanketed the areas surrounding the melting Fukushima reactors. Officials were conflicted about the application of stable potassium iodide to keep radio iodine from penetrating the thyroids of members of the public. Sun Sunichi Yamashita, a doctor who had studied thyroid cancers in the Chernobyl contained areas, expected no impact from radio iodine exposure. Reports differ, however, with some saying that Yushita was publicly claiming no danger while secretly telling experts he had serious concerns about childhood cancer. It goes on to say he encouraged those who had been exposed to protect themselves against radiation by being in a good mood and laughing. FMU, and you won't, radiation won't hurt you if you're smiling. Remember that, Dorcas? FMU had taken the precautionary measure of distributing KI to its staff members and their children. That's potassium iodide. FMU claimed that this was to conjole nervous hospital staff during the disaster. In other words, he downplayed this at every instance. He's one of the people that uh, those who trust the nuclear industry often look to. Yamashita admitted that he had given incorrect information shortly after the disaster when he advised FMU not to disperse potassium iodide tablets to children. 
And he had made his decision. He reportedly looked up the Fallout maps and said, oops. Oh, you know, oops, you could be at risk for thyroid cancer because of the advice that I gave. The entire study is quite long and quite cumbersome, but that is, that's what you need to know is going on quite frequently. All of the science that you need to have it proved is here in the article. It says, uh, for instance, for any healthy study, the most reliable data came from comparing disease outcomes among those who were exposed to the pollutant in question, in this case, radioiodine, to those who were unexposed. Having an unexposed population is especially important when it is hard to know what level people were exposed to. The amount of, the amount of disease in the unexposed population is considered a baseline, or the amount that would occur in a population naturally. The amount of the disease, such as thyroid cancer, is increased in the exposed population compared to the unexposed. The pollutant in question may be responsible. However, FMU is insisting that they can establish thyroid cancer baseline with data collected beginning in late 2001 after exposed population. See what they did? They deliberately altered when it was safe by testing at a time when people were highly dosed and including them in the number of people who were not dosed in order to make the numbers appear safer so that the nuclear industry could, again, tell everybody, move on, there's nothing to see here. Um, like I said, there's a lot to read here. I do want to read this paragraph on it, so don't zone out on me. We have lots to get to this evening, but listen to this. Manipulation and concealment of Fukushima thyroid data masks the true impact of radioiodine exposure, but it is also beginning to influence the way we study thyroid disease overall, having implications beyond study of Fukushima or Chernobyl. Steps to curb screenings and monitoring are pernicious because they enshrine the withholding of life-enhancing and life-saving treatment for victims of radiation exposure. Furthermore, withholding data, it says, from independent researchers will disallow any effort to replicate study conclusions made by FNU and the thyroid committees. This is politics masquerading as authoritative and independent decision-making based on science. In reality, it has no true scientific support, and it is an attempt to blur, bur, bury the story of radiation's impact on survivors of Fukushima. And what more do you need to know? Um, it says the FMU claims that the increased cases of thyroid cancer were found through more testing, TUE, are probably due to overdiagnosis, implying that these cancers were quiet and would have remained clinically hidden had monitoring not occurred due to the Fukushima incidents. In other words, you keep hearing this lie that they're only seeing more of it because they're testing more for it, and people have always had this level of cancer. No, it says here quite clearly. Enough of these cancers had metastasized to other areas of the body that surgical removal was indicated, there's a link to it, for the vast majority of them. In the absence of screening, these cancers would have been caught later, probably requiring more aggressive treatment, leading to a decreased quality of life. Thyroid cancer data from pre-Fukushima Japan indicates some differences with the post-Fukushima thyroid cancers in the FHMS. For instance, tumor size at removal was smaller for H FHMS cases, yet invasion to other tissues was higher, indicating not only that surgical removal was necessary, but that these post-Fukushima smaller tumors could be more aggressive. When also pointing to how these grew much, much faster than we were told that they were going to do. Remember, we were told that they weren't going to show up this quickly, remember? Well, that looks to be total bunk science now, doesn't it? Again, go to the description. Make sure that you do read the entire um, release from Beyond Nuclear. All right, this is from AccuWeather. 
Oh, come on, load. You can load slower than that. 6.3 earthquakes struck off the coast of Japan near Fukushima, August 4th, just a few days ago. The earthquake rattled the same region of Japan where an earthquake triggered a nuclear power plant disaster in 2011. Does that sound like anything that a certain long-haired host might have been telling you and showing you the science to back that up for since the Fukushima disaster? Was it not observed by anybody that you could tell from geological data and other data, the science of plate tectonics, tells us that once an earthquake of that severity strikes an area, it's not only active, but it's almost hard to differentiate what is still from such a quake. Now, I'm not saying that these are aftershocks from 2011. But I am saying it can be a sign that the region is definitely not calming any, which matters because they're saying, of course, that it's going to take, what, 40 years to dismantle this? But again, they got a time scale up, assuming that in that time we'll be able to invent things that don't exist yet in order to be able to do it, because otherwise we don't have significant robotics even that can begin to dismantle this. <clears throat> can hardly even look at it. We've covered that here, too. 6.3 magnitude earthquake uh, struck offshore of Japan near Fukushima on Sunday. People reported feeling the quake in the capital, Tokyo, approximately 155 miles away, 250 kilometers. We'll be talking about these high earthquakes uh, a lot since March, April, when I started seeing the data researching for these very shows indicating exactly where this was going. This was going to be a very busy time for earthquakes. The number of global earthquakes is three times above normal. 6.1, 6.6, 7.3 plus dozens more hit the ring of fire over the last 48 hours. This is from back July 15th, 2019. I had just missed it when I did the last show. <clears throat> it's on um, Michael Snyder, great informative journalist, one of the best probably extant today. Economic collapse, and it's also shared on InfoWars. Within 48 hours, we have seen large earthquakes going off like firecrackers all along the ring of fire. As you will see below, a magnitude 6.1, we just talked about it, quake hit Japan, a magnet, and that was before, okay, that was prior to the August 4th, 6th. That was a 6.1 that hit on the what, 13th, 14th of July. Quake just hit Australia at a magnitude 7.3, just hit Indonesia. And of course, all of this comes just after, a week after the California was hit by the two largest quakes that has experienced in more than two decades. Now, the reason I talk about these quakes so much on the show is because there are regions, or two reasons. First of all, there are regions where a quake, severe flooding, anything like that, could create a Fukushima-like water incident. By like, I mean in comparison. I don't mean that a dam is equal to an ocean. But I mean that it can inundate a nuclear power plant with water. There have been studies that have showed that this could be a very significant problem for not only the generators, but the backup generators as well, just like it was at Fukushima, in some part due for the same reasons. Another reason it matters is that <clears throat> the science has shown us that one, at least one of the reactors that went red in Fukushima did so as a result of the earthquake prior to the tidal wave coming. So for these reasons, and I'm sure there's others, feel free to put it in my comment line. For these reasons, it seems rather important that we keep track of this. Well, it says, uh, is all this shaking unusual? Just a few moments ago, he writes, I pulled up the most recent data from the earthquake track, and what I discovered, there's a link there, is more than just a bit alarming. Looking at the entire globe, we have averaged 193 earthquakes of magnitude 1.5 or greater per day in 2019. 
that is very high. But it pales in comparison to what we have witnessed over the last week. Within the last seven days, our planet has experienced an average of more than 677 earthquakes of magnitude 1.5 or greater per day. That means that the number of global earthquakes right now is three times above normal. Pardon me, dying of thirst. As the number of very large earthquakes is frighteningly, at a frighteningly high level, uh, according to the USGS, there have been 121 earthquakes of at least a 4.5 around the world within the last seven days, and that includes a magnitude 6.1 earthquake that just hit Japan. Now, some people have said that if a significant earthquake was to topple the reactors at Fukushima, and again, I, I suggest that you read all of Mr. Snyder's work there, if, a, if an earthquake of significant magnitude was to topple one more, all of the reactors of, at the Fukushima site, that it could be an extinction event for mankind. Other studies have said no, the southern hemisphere would still be fine. Of course, what that would do to you know, fish that don't necessarily, or the sea life that doesn't necessarily, you know, honor which hemisphere it may be in. The outcome of something like a toppling of the Fukushima reactors is almost too grisly to even calculate. And yet, not only are we seeing them having trouble dismantling this, but we have people saying that it might be a good idea to build more nuclear power plants, even as we are seeing more earthquakes than ever. Um, even if Iran then was suddenly the great global citizen that they claim to be, yeah, right, they're trying to build a nuclear power plant on an active fault zone. So even if they were friends of the earth and loving Christians, giving out candy to children, not cutting off heads, beating women in the street, it would be good to know that you can't build a nuclear power plant on an active fault zone, of which Bashir in Iran is one of the most active in the world. In terms of severity, I mean. Um, this is from the AP. Japan utility to scrap four more reactors at Fukushima. As long as this is done safely, thank God. But what is safely? Can we trust General Electric, which is TEPCO? They've shown repeatedly that we can't. But here's what we've got. The operator of the nuclear power plant wrecked by a 2011 earthquake and tsunami said Wednesday that it will decommission four more reactors in northern Japan in addition to those already being scrapped. Thank God in heaven. Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings, which is why you should never in invest in a mutual fund or a stock or anything that has GE in it, because GE is TEPCO. They said the final decision on dismantling the four reactors at the Fukushima Daini plant will be formally approved at a board meeting expected later this month. It's uh, nearby the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, of course, of which we've been talking about. So, uh, hopefully, it says the company has said the decommissioning will cost about 280 billion yen, 2.5 billion dollars. See, and they leave that off too. They talk about the supposed savings that you get from nuclear, even though it gets subsidies and tax breaks and everything else and increases medical costs by causing a myriad of health issues during things like routine releases. Routine cancers, as Helen Collicott says. Not only do you pay in those ways, but you also pay when it comes time to take them apart to the tune of about $2.5 trillion. In addition to the estimated 22 trillion yen, that'd be 200 billion dollars needed for the ongoing cleanup at the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Of the 54 workable commercial reactors that used to operate in Japan before the Fukushima accident, 24 of them, including 10 of TEPCO's, are designated for scrapping. Only nine have since been restarted, while restart approval for 12 others is still pending. God willing, that won't ever happen. 
Other nuclear plant operators have also opted to decommission aging reactors due to the hefty spending to meet new safety standards. Safety in nuclear, there is no such thing. Um, now this is extremely long, so I'm not going to read a lot of it. We've talked about this in the past, but I wouldn't be much of a host if I at least didn't steer you towards it, particularly if you found the last show interesting. No nuke CA .net. Uh, Dark dawning, the age of nuclear waste begins. And it's, it's been updated repeatedly. Um, they're calling it the nuclear gold mine. It says, I felt that we got a final wake-up call at Fukushima and that we need to phase out and shut down 104 reactors in America. I will put it very bluntly. We need to kill them before they kill us. S. David Freeman, 90-something former TVA head who holds the record for shutting down safety utility reactors than any other administrator. Basically, it says the new radioactive gold rush is the privatizing of nuclear waste management. Many people don't understand that those of us who know how dangerous these things are it's not necessarily an assured win when they're shut down because it depends how they are shut down and what is being done with the nuclear waste. Now, some people have said in my comment line that some of it ends up dropping in, in the oceans, and I'm sure it does. But a lot of it is so toxic that it can't even be approached. So you end up with people then saying, well, give us X amount of dollars and we'll do it. Well, there's some concern that there are corners being cut in this and that the more chefs you bring into the kitchen, the more unstable the recipe is going to be. This, this was worth um, highlighting. I did, I did pull this out here. My earlier quote was from the Columbus Free Press. It's all in this uh, No Nuke CA article in the description. According to the new U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, such high-level radioactive wastes produce fatal doses of radiation with just a short period of exposure. Even non-lethal exposures can cause cancers and other diseases years later, an effect called latency. Resulting DNA damage will be passed on to future generations. Women and girls are most susceptible to damage. Well, perhaps, but that's how many of you remember we talked about um, my friend Joe, Joe Blaze. His cancer was traced back to radioactive exposure that his grandfather suffered in the armed forces. No permanent storage facility for this high-level radioactive waste currently exists. Aside from far unsuccessful efforts in Congress to revive the failed Yucca Mountain project, there is no plan to construct one. Now, we talked about the, uh, the graveyard of nukes going in Finland, which is meant to last for 100,000 years. They don't even know how to warn somebody in 100,000 years. We can, we don't even sure what things written 5,000 years ago say in some languages. The Dead Sea Scrolls saved us on the Bible. Um, this is worth a read. Because we are stranded with radioactive elements, radionuclides, and toxins that we can't even begin to guess on how to store, which we have to store for an indefinite period of time, even if every single reactor in America was shut down immediately. That is fact. And that also brings us to You are an idiot. In the dumby 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 of the day. Now let me say real quick, if you wish to donate to the show, I would greatly appreciate it. And you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every, uh, through PayPal, every penny that you give to me, I put towards gathering information. I mail out dunce caps. That shows you they're going to be next week or the week following. That costs money. Research time. All, everything you're seeing. You know, I've been talking for almost a half hour here. 
everything that you're seeing, that which I do, that which I gather, all of it costs money, all of it takes time. So please, if you can donate to the show, please do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Um, the dumpty of the day goes completely to the nuke industry and uh, those who support the nuke industry for reasons of climate change. Realize that people are applauding it. I mean, I was warning people 20 years ago when... Listen. Oh, I hate the ads. Basically, Rush Limbaugh, of all people, absolutely destroys the global warming crowd in a, in a, in a video here called Limbaugh Tears into 2020 Dems in Hannity Exclusive. Um, unfortunately, I mean, this is good, I guess. 721,401 views. It needs to have way more than that. It was dated August 1st, 2019. And he destroys the foolish notion that man is warming the planet and exposes the amount of money we are spending on it and the foolishness in doing so. And people laugh. Nobody's ever going to believe that. They say, now, here we are. They do believe it. Now, I understand the threat here. Uh, let me give you an example of, of, I think, where we have a golden opportunity. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard came out of nowhere last night because she reamed Kamala Harris. All right, so anyway... Now, He's also talking about the debates. But my, my bigger point here is that if it's only 19 minutes, 19 minutes and 32 seconds. Again, the name of the video is Limbaugh Tears into 2020 Dems in Hannity Exclusive. The global warming crowd gets shot completely out of the sky, thus winning today's dum de dum de dum de dum de of the day. Um, again... Okay. There is no man-made climate change. There is nothing we can do to stop whatever the weather is going to do. We can't make it warmer. We can't make it colder. We can't change hurricanes' directions. We can't dissipate them. We can't create them. And yet they're, they're, they're campaigning and trying to convince people. I mean, look at millennials. It's really sad. There's a lot of young people that really think this planet is not going to be habitable. By the time they hit 65, these people are ruining people's lives. They're ruining their futures all in the pursuit of power for themselves. It, 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 it. Bam! That is well said. Thank you, friends. You've been listening to The Correct Views. Please hit subscribe. Please let me know what you think of the show, friends. Good night. God bless. I'm not even sure where the off is for you guys, so we're just going to click you by. I guess that'll do it. Good night, Facebook friends. Hey, Kenny. And up here.